So, Father, we just thank you and bless you and honor you, O oh God. We thank you on tonight, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for grace, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for the leading of your spirit, O oh God, and the subject area that uh, you have given me this evening, O oh God. Thank you for having mercy on your people, cause you. God to understand the beauty of your rest. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, this evening, I'm going to talk a little bit about a living promise. And this living promise is the rest of God. In Hebrews chapter 4, starting with verse 8 and 9. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. So there remains a rest for the people of God. And it is a beautiful living promise. The scripture says that Joshua could not bring them into the rest, but there is a day appointed for you and I and people that want to apprehend uh, the beautiful promise of rest. In Joshua chapter 22, verse one through five, then Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, and said to them, You have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. You have not left your brethren these many days up to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given rest to your brethren, as he promised them. Now therefore return and go to your tents and to the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But take careful heed to the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So there is a, if you will, a prerequisite to all of this. And unless we keep our part, we will find ourselves not being able to not only enter into his rest and certainly not stay in his rest. So today, if we hear his voice, the voice that calls us to this place of rest that God promised that he would give to the people of God that love him, that obey him, that follow him, that uh, go on to know the Lord. And uh, so this aspect of, of rest that uh, I'm gonna be talking about, and I'm gonna be talking about several aspects of it, but even in my own personal life, um, the Lord called me uh, in this area of my life to an area of rest. And 37 years ago, he sent a prophet to me and the prophet was prophet Aaron and the prophet Aaron spoke something to me and it was uh, a request of the Lord. Uh, it was a directive from the Lord and the directive was uh, mm -hmm. come home and homeschool your children. Well, actually I was already at home and he said, I want you to homeschool your children and you probably will, trying to figure out uh, how does, what does this have to do with rest? But 37 years ago, when the Lord called me to homeschool my children and I obeyed him. Now, I didn't want to obey him. Um, in fact, I fought against it. Uh, it made me uh, go into a place of unrest and uncertainty. So how is God going to bring about a rest uh, from this directive that he gave me through the prophet Aaron. And so the reason why I'm being real simplistic about this, because we are real simplistic people, um, I dare say we cannot reach something lofty because, you know, we, uh, prophet Aaron's been talking about the Sabbath and the rest the Sabbath brings and the priests and all of that. And all that is good stuff, but we need to break it down into pieces that we can uh, digest, that we can bite off, that we can understand in our spirit what some of the aspects 
of what the rest of God means. So 37 years ago, the Lord sent him to me and said, I want you to homeschool. And at the time I had four children. I wound up having six children that I wound up homeschooling all of them. And the process that I went through to homeschool them, I did not understand that at the end of it, God was going to give me rest. See, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convey to you this mm -hmm. evening. It is through and by the obedience of the struggle when the Holy Spirit spoke to me to mm -hmm. homeschool my children. And I didn't realize at the time because I went through a lot of struggle. I looked, went through a lot of pain. I went through anxiety and uncertainty. I went through doubt. And I went through in the process, not understanding how God was going to bring me to a place of rest through the leading of the Holy Spirit in my personal life 37 years ago to be brought to a place of rest. Mm. But I can tell you today, I am, I'm resting. Oh my God, am I resting? Uh, I labored to enter into that rest. And I was mm. laboring until 2011 when my last person graduated from homeschool or redemption homeschool. That's what we called it. The homeschool that God wanted them to learn and to prosper in. The homeschool that God wanted to educate them about the ways of God. But as a result of the struggle to enter into God's rest, I'm resting. Uh, my children are a tremendous blessing to me. They follow in the way of the Lord. Um, they care for us. Um, they understand uh, the knowledge of God from the perspective of having uh, been with parents that actually were not perfect, but had to live truth, um, faith, hope, love. And not that we have uh, come to the fullness of it, but through that process, we enter to a place of rest. So today, and when I look back on it, on the uh, commandment, if you will, uh, over the directive that God gave me uh, back then, 37 years ago. I'm at a, it's such a beautiful place to be to know that God asked you to do something and he actually did it. I didn't understand what I understand today that I would be resting as a result of it. I would, I would not have some of the struggle that other people might have with their children, their adult children, because my children provide me with rest. And that's what I understand what an aspect of rest can do and be in Hebrews chapter four, verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. So there has to be a diligence. There has to be a made of mind. Uh, and they, uh, when God told them that he wanted to bring them into a place of rest, they didn't believe him. And even when the Lord told me that he wanted me to homeschool my children, I didn't believe the fullness of what he wanted to do through the process of obedience. And so... And I had to mix it with faith. So when God gives you a directive, when he gives you a purpose, when he gives you a commandment, when he requests something of you, and it's impossible for this thing to happen because you might lack the ability and the skill base and the knowledge to do whatever it is that he's asking you to do, then you were like, or you are like me. I had no confidence that I would be able to fulfill the task 
that God wanted to give me and bring me to a place of rest. So I had to mix it with faith. And when God wanted to bring the children of Israel to a place of rest, they did not mix it with faith. And so he's looking for another today. He's looking for people that hear his voice today. That if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. When I speak to you that I want you to do something because I'm trying to bring you to a place of rest, to a place of completion. And even though you might lack the ability and the skill base and the understanding and the knowledge to do it, because God told you to do it, he wants to perform something in your life that when you look back, you say to yourself, I got over and now I'm at a place of rest because there was a completion to the task. So now I'm enjoying the aspect of rest today because of obedience of 37 years ago. And I did not have a clue that God would wrought a victory and bring me to a place of rest. In the church today, uh, we are reviewing chapters or the whole book of Proverbs for that matter to bring us to a higher and greater degree of rest because that's the purpose of counsel. That's And through the counsel of scriptures and biblical history, stories and repentance and testimonies and, and personal experience and all of that, the whole idea is that we might apprehend a living promise and God made a promise and the promise was and you know God makes a whole lot of promises and sometimes we kind of minimize this promise of actually coming to a place of rest so uh, something that's living and is active uh, and is powerful and it, it, this living part, uh, promise is something you can walk and talk with and or feed off of. It's not something that you, you just read about. There has to be an activation that causes this promise to live on the inside of you. And how it lives is through obedience. How it lives is through actions. How it lives is step by step until there is what I'm calling a completion. So, and a promise is a gift graciously bestowed, not as a pledge secured by negotiation. So we have a living promise for, from God for today. It can be activated right now if you and I desire to have it. And this activation will bring us rest. And then we can understand and share with all the saints the rest of God that comes from obeying him, following him, and believing him. God's promises are objects of our faith and hope. For faith believes those things that God has promised are true. You have to believe it, that the things that God says about himself, about his, of his heaven, about anything that God says, it is true. And we have to believe it because there's a resistance inside of us and outside of us to not to believe God. And not only that is true, but hope expects the performance of what faith believes. So hope is then activated when our faith, our faith is mixed with a promise that leads us to rest. Beautiful, wonderful rest. We believe what God has promised because he has committed himself and bound himself to act for us. He said, I am well able to finish what I told you to do. And they did not believe him. 
the, 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 the people in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, they did not believe him because they didn't mix it with faith. And we are to learn from their examples. We are to learn from what they did not do in order that we do it, that we believe him and we obey him. So there is a rest to the people of God. And the rest, let's start in Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, so through whom also things, we have access. So one of the things that rest brings at the end and before we even start, when we believe God, we have peace. So we have a peace with God. And you can, you can tell when you don't believe him, there's unrest, the opposite. But when we believe God, there is a peace. So gradually, as I accepted the purpose of God for my life, the instruction of God, of the Holy Spirit, what the prophet shared with me, he wanted me to homeschool. Gradually, I begin to say, God's got to do this because I can't. And that uh, understanding granted me a certain measure of peace. Now, obviously, I will come out of peace during the journey from time to time because obstacles and adversity was constantly presenting itself. But when I look back over it today, I said, wow, God. And that gives me the faith to believe him for the impossible because that situation at that time was impossible, but God made it possible. In Luke chapter two, verse 13 through 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, good will toward men. So there is a peace that God wants to give the whole world. And obviously they have rejected it. But you and I, as children of God, as believers, he wants to give us peace. And when we apprehend the problem, the promise of rest, peace floods over our soul like a river. And we begin to relax. We begin to be at ease because we realize that God is going to do it if it's going to be done. And so we stop fretting, we stop worrying about it. We stop questioning and doubting the power of God to perform whatever he told us that he would perform in our lives. And that brings rest. In Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So when we trust in God, our minds are stayed on him and not on our inability to do whatever he says that will happen and can happen and does happen. And that brings us peace, which is an aspect of rest. And the, the other forms of biblical rest, including the Sabbath, I already spoke a little bit about peace. There's an ease or and or there is a refreshment that comes from this rest that I'm speaking about. And Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 through 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to, his, to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So part of the refreshing that comes from rest is when we speak in the spirit, 
to God because it has been my experience when I am in, in unrest, when I start speaking in the spirit, then there is a rest that comes. There is a release that comes that causes me to believe that God is in the situation in order that the purpose that he's given me a task to do will work itself out according to the power that works in me. And the power is activated through uh, speaking in tongues in Romans chapter eight or speaking in the spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, groanings which cannot be uttered. And that's the reason why when we're in the thick of the battle, if you will, of the problem, the situation, God has given us a vehicle by which we might get some relief and therefore come to a place of rest. And that is speaking in the spirit of the things that may be happening that we have no uh, faith at that time that God is going to do what he said he was going to do, which is to bring it to completion. Therefore, we can have rest. Uh, in Matthew 11, verse 25 through 30, this kind of rest, because this is another kind of rest that I'm talking about, is an act of resistance to the empires, the kingdoms, the philosophies, the cultures, the religions of the world. This kind of, of, of rest is causes you to resist it. Because when you're in uh, the situations that come upon all of us in life, the problems, the trials and, trim and temptation, there are spirits that want us to come out of the rest of God, want us to come out of having faith that God is will and able to do what he says he will do. And so this scripture in Matthew 11, 25, 30, is a, a counter uh, resistance uh, against the resistance that comes against us. It says that we're going to fight against the philosophies and the, the culture. We're going to fight against the naysayers and in modern language, the haters uh, that may come against us to tell us that God is not able to do what he said he can do. And somehow or another, take us out of the rest of God. Matthew 11, verse 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the Lord said, my yoke is easy. He said, I'm talking about the bays, the, the people that don't know it all. In fact, they don't know anything except for they wait uh, for the leading of the Holy Spirit because they don't know what to do, especially with things when God speaks to you to do something, we have no idea. So it says, my yoke. So God says, you think my yoke is hard, don't you, Denise? And I have to say to him, yes. But God said, I'm going to prove to you that my yoke is easy and you're going to find rest in your soul. Because when he initially told me to homeschool my children, I mean, that's like a, a, a 10 ton block that he just dropped on my head. And the frustration and the, quite honestly, the anger, the anxiety, um, the, why are you doing this to me? 
And the Lord showed me through the process that when I look back, I said, boy, Lord, that yoke was easy. <laughs> Your yoke is easy. I was the one that was creating these yokes of unbelief, of doubt. But all I had to do is to assume the purpose and let God bring me to a place of rest. So over the years, I would go through one obstacle after the next, because when I started homeschooling years ago, there were very few people. It was a novel idea. It was something that religious kooks did. And I was considered a religious kook, kook. And not only a kook, but a black one at that. And so that wasn't good. I had no idea of uh, how things work. And the technology back then was pretty much non-existent. So you had to do it the old school way where the teacher stands in front of the class and teach that way. And so I had, a, I was at a loss. And the older the children got, and uh, as they moved from grade to grade, I just thought, oh, well, I only do this for elementary school and that's gonna be it. And uh, elementary school came and passed and they said, well, I'm only gonna do this for junior high school because the God knows I don't know this stuff and came and went. And then we got into high school and I'm not getting into all of that today, but the point of it is um, I, when I look back, his yoke was easy because look what I got as a result. Look at the rest that I'm in today. Sure, the struggle was real. Uh, in the very beginning, and the trials were all over the place. But I look back and I think to myself, wow, God, you actually did it. So this kind of rest, as I said, is an act of resistance against the things that says you can't, that come from the world and also come from within our own lives. And 1 Corinthians um, before I get, go to 1 Corinthians, another example of how God calls me to rest. Now, and I'm still in the process of this rest. I haven't arrived like I had with homeschool. But the Lord told me years ago, uh, even before homeschool, and he came, he sent the prophet, and the prophet's name was Prophet Aaron. And the prophet Aaron said to me, uh, Denise, I think that the Lord wants you to leave your job. And if I left my job, then that meaning means I'm leaving a paycheck. And I'm also leaving my, um, I will no longer be independent. And I resisted that as well. And um, he left it in my lap, if you will. Uh, he told me what he thought uh, uh, that the Lord would have me to do. And um, and I didn't want to do it. Uh, but here again, uh, in a real life promise, uh, you have to let that thing work inside of you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And he started to work inside of me. And I had to, again, mix that with faith. And because I did not want to do it. In fact, I was very upset about it. Uh, but even though I was upset, I did it anyway. Uh, because I felt like that that man of God was telling me the purpose of God for that part of my life. And that led me to another aspect of rest that, as I said to you, I have not completely uh, entered in there fully. But trust me, after 50 years of marriage, I'm well on my way. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. And so I'm in that, uh, I'm that scripture uh, is going to lead me and has led me and continues to lead me to rest because it is important uh, in my relationship with God and the purpose that he has for my life that I understand the order of God and the rest he wants to provide for me 
as a result of getting in that order. Now, this is big time business and the culture that we live in today uh, to agree with God and so, cooperate with God um, for uh, your, in my case, my husband to be my head. Okay. And the, the rest that comes as a result of that is in on a lot of different yeah, levels. So and it's also on, on the level of uh, spiritual things because they are, are angels uh, that are waiting for me to be uncovered, to attack me uh, in spiritual ways and cause me uh, to miss uh, the plan and the purpose for my life. And so because I've agreed, because it is an agreement, it's not a forced thing. God is not going to force us uh, into his purpose. He asks us to trust him uh, for his purpose for our lives. And so um, I I've, I've decided that I would trust God uh, and call, if you will, Abraham Lord and trust God. Now, that doesn't mean I have arrived. But I have required, or I have acquired, I should say, some rest from that, uh, of the obedience that took place on my part. Because I can say to God, I did what you told me to do. Now you have to protect me. Uh, because I'm giving up a lot. I'm giving up my job. And I did that years ago. My job, because one of the reasons why he had to take me uh, out of my job was his other plan for me was to homeschool and do some other things as well. And he wanted me to be at home because he wanted me to learn certain things. I know this is hard and I'm still working on it myself. Uh, he wanted us to learn. He wanted me to learn things, certain things in silence from the man that he put over top of me to help me to understand things that I could not understand for the purpose that he has for my life. And so therefore, when I, when I look at it today, I can understand the rest here again that God was bringing me to and why he was doing it in Colossians chapter three, verse 18. Wives submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. So, I was in a situation where there is no way I can do this without the power of the Holy Ghost working in my life. And that's just the truth. Um, and I'm still learning and adapting. But every time I do, uh, God brings me to a place of rest in that particular area because there are so many areas in my life that quite frankly have to be put to sleep, have to be put to rest. Uh, that the purpose of God as to why I was born a woman, why I was uh, married to the person I'm married to, why he uh, had me had the children that I had, why he had me homeschooled, all of that. Uh, why I had, uh, in, uh, I've had six cesareans, all of all of that, all of that was to bring me to a place of rest, to bring me to a place of trust. And as um, some of you may or may not know, I, I got saved when I was 26 years old. And Lord willing, uh, in another couple of weeks, I'll be 72. And the point I'm trying to make, uh, the degrees of, of rest uh, that have been open to me through obeying uh, uh, the purpose of God for my life, for believing God, for mixing it uh, with faith, that ultimately the Lord will be glorified. See what time it is. And um, uh, another definition, if you will, Hebrew definition of rest is to stop. And God rested, Exodus 31, 17, on the seventh day. And uh, the Bible said he was refreshed. So there's a refreshing that comes 
from stopping, just stopping, uh, just and and let's see what's going on here. Let's examine what has been done. So from time to time, I just stop and I am arrested about the rest that has been afforded me in my life through obedience. You know, I was never, um, you know, prophet Aaron, even as a child, the, the Lord would speak to him and he had all kinds of um, uh, adventures or uh, um, scenes or um, um, different things that will go on spiritually, you know, you know, angels popping in and out of his life on a regular, you know, and uh, he would dream all kinds of dreams. Uh, from a child, he knew he was called and he resisted the call and all that. And uh, none of that stuff ever happened to me. I was just, you know, yeah, I, I never had any spiritual kinds of experience except for one, and I'm not even going there tonight. But um, I, for the most, I didn't have anything that would dictate that I would be in front of this Zoom call meeting tonight. Let's say it that way. I mean, it, it, it just. But I. But when I look back and I see all the places where God says stop, and I rested, and you know, Prophet Aaron came to me uh, years ago, I don't know how many years ago, and said, thus said the Lord, uh, the Lord wants you to teach uh, on uh, Wednesday night. And here again, same thing. Oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. It's just too much. And how am I going to follow you on top of it? I mean, uh, I, I can't, I, I, you know, I, I, it's not going to happen. And I had to mix it with uh, faith. And he, this is another part of my life that hasn't completely rested. But when I look back, I look at the, the if you will, the volume of rest that has been accomplished by that obedience. And, and um, so that's another definition of rest, just to stop. So even in the natural, we have to stop and we have to go to sleep. And, um, you know, being kept, if you will, from going to sleep is almost torture. In fact, it is torture. And people you know, that's tormenting a person uh, to get certain information out or so forth, maybe it's only done in the spy movies, I don't know. But if you keep somebody from sleeping, they will fall apart. So it's it's important that we enter into this rest, uh, this living promise that God has given us, that we learn to rest uh, when things happen in our lives. Uh, you know, I was uh, sharing with my uh, daughter and she had some flooding in the kitchen and all of that and they had to pull up and this was brand new tile that they had just put down and so forth. And, and I told her, this is not a life and death situation. Uh, this can be fixed. So I need you to, to bring and to apprehend or enter into a promise uh, of rest. And then it told her they would not be able to, you know, that was the last of that particular tile. It was out of stock, no more happening. And then of course she found some and uh, she had to go a little bit of a ways to get it, but she found it because, you know, God wants us uh, to maintain this, if you will, um, this this a uh, level of rest. So I'm gonna have to go on before I run out of town. Hebrews three, starting with verse um, seven. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, oh, if you will, I'm sorry. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, the teacher, the instructor, you know what the Holy Ghost is determined to do with people that obey Him that they come into a rest, that they enter a rest. When they mix it with faith and enter, the Holy Ghost is determined. The Holy Ghost can do it. I'm trying to tell you up in here, the Holy Ghost can do it. He can bring you to rest. You have to, you have to mix it with faith and say, God, you told me that. I didn't tell myself that. I can't do it, but you told me that. So I'm gonna mix it with faith. 
and I'm going to enter into a rest about this because you said it says today. If you hear his voice right now, because God has chosen a particular time when people must trust, believe him and obey him, because this is a living promise. You, it's, a, it's, it's a living thing. And so it, 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 it has a shelf life. Yes, it has a shelf life to it. And so you can't fool around and, and years later, that's not how this works. It works now. It works when you hear his voice. Don't harden your heart. So when I heard his, heard his voice, my heart wanted to harden, but I didn't allow it to because the whole idea is to walk and talk with God that we can enter to a rest, that we can believe. And the Bible says, Abraham believed God and he counted it for righteousness. Then when I look at Abraham's life, I saw, I see all of his slip ups. I see all of his issues. But do you know there was something that was determined in his heart? It's probably the seed, the word of God, the incorruptible word of God. It wouldn't allow him to give up. He just kept, no matter how many mistakes he made, the Bible said he believed him, even though he was, the Bible says in the New Testament, he did not consider the weakness of his flesh, but he did consider it. It's almost like God says, so what? He did consider it. <laughs> but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And he came to a place where he rested. And I know he did because he gave up his son. And to God, because he believed that God was able to raise him from the dead. You're talking about a rest. That's a rest. And God wants to bring us to different aspects of his rest in our lives. So if we don't do this thing today while it's fresh, it's nothing like eating fresh bread. Oh my God, if some of you all may know how it tastes. That's what it tastes like when God speaks to you and it's fresh and you eat that thing right away. Because if you put it on the shelf, it's going to grow stale and you won't have the faith to do it. That's why when he speaks, you have to do it quickly right away. Proverbs 22, 17 through 21. Incline your ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply your heart to my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if you keep them within you. Let them all be fixed upon your lips, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I have instructed you today, even you. Have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge, that I may make you know the certainty of the words of truth, that you may answer words of truth to those who send to you? And Hebrews chapter 3, verse 11. So, it's how important it is for us to jump on it, to, to, to make this thing happen, to activate this, this faith that is a real thing. Continue. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. So I swore that they would not because they rebelled. They were stiff-necked. They always went astray in their heart. They say they were going to do it, and they didn't do it. I swore, so I set my sights on another people that would hear my voice and obey. And if they obeyed me, they would enter into my rest. In Psalms, 116, verse 7 through 8. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. So the Lord said, return into your rest, O my soul. Don't get away from the safety of rest, of faith in me trusting me. Don't disobey me when I speak to you. Don't doubt my word when you know that that's me talking to you. They did all of that. 
but I'm looking for people. I'm looking for you. That when you hear me, you would obey me. That you would mix it with faith. Because I swore they would not. In Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you, you will find rest for your soul. Thank you. You'll find rest to your soul. You know, I was talking to someone today, long story short, um, uh, and she and the person was sharing how they raised their children. They um, used the rod of correction and those kinds of things that God has given us in, our, in his word uh, for us to use to encourage our children uh, to obey, that when they get older, uh, they won't disobey because they understand why correction is necessary. In fact, she said her children agreed with her today how necessary it was for her to use the rod of correction and how in our culture today, you know, along with, believe it or not, uh, the prayer and and Ten Commandments that were, and when I was in school, hung on our wall uh, in our classroom. Another thing that had been taken away in this culture is the rod of correction. But the rod of correction is a necessary instrument that God has given us as parents to help our children not to stray. And because we're caught up in the culture and the philosophy of the new age, some of us have abandoned that tool because that tool was designed to bring us as parents when our children got older into rest. And they have successfully removed that tool from us as parents because now you can understand why so many parents are not resting uh, with their children because they did not use all of what God had for us as parents to make sure that when our job is finished as parents and they become responsible citizens and adults that we can rest. But that's not so in our world where parents are not resting because they did it another way. And so they cannot enter into rest. And sometimes they wait because you have to do that thing today. You have to do that thing when your children are young because you won't have to correct them that much because they get a revelation when they're young. And you wait and wait, that's something else. You cannot wait, you wait and wait. And then you're gonna pull out a raw of correction and they're pretty much in pre-adolescence. It's not going to work. You do it today when there's opportunity, when there's grace, when you don't even have to do it uh, as often because at that point they get a revelation and uh, they will understand that you did it like my children did. My children understand that as, as when they were little children, we had to correct them. My, and my mother corrected me uh, as a, and she didn't use uh, let me put it this way, proper tools, <laughs> you know, you know, so because it was 10 of us and she had to make a point really, really quickly. And if you were the one that volunteered because of disobedience, God had mercy on your soul. So it's important that they won't become part of the group that they will never enter into rest because they never learned to obey. They never learn to honor. They never learn to respect authority. Those kinds of things that's important uh, if you as a parent want to enter into rest. Jeremiah 18, 15. Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to worthless idols, and they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in pathways and not on a highway. So there are ancient paths. They're tried and true ways that scripture gives us in our daily lives for every aspect of our lives. And we've been seduced away from it. And then we wonder why we don't have rest. We don't have peace 
we don't have ease that and we can't get to rest and every day it's confusion and disorder because we've gone away from the ancient ways and how important it is for us uh, to understand that, particularly in the days that we're living in. So these, uh, this, um, these, li this living promise of rest or the rest of God uh, is through the belief in the son who the father has sent. And we can have an opportunity to enter into the promised rest in Hebrews 4, chapter, chapter 4, 1 through 10. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. So these, or... this promise of rest allows us to apprehend the purpose of God in our lives. So therefore, we labor to enter into the rest. The, the, uh, this promise drives us towards our goal, that at the end of this goal, there will be rest. There will be completion. There will be ease. And unless uh, we're ready to go on a transition to the other side, there's going to be another opportunity that God's going to present to us as we apprehend the promise of rest. It's going to push us towards the goal. And we don't know this initially. We don't know that we're being pushed into, if you will, if I can say it like that, into rest. But that will be the outcome as we pursue the promise and labor to enter into the rest. Continue. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, so as he has do, said. So we who have believed enter into rest because we know that our confidence has to be in God. There are certain things we cannot do in this flesh. And he already knows that. It is through the struggle uh, that we grow and mature. It is through the struggle that at the end of it, we look back on it and say, thank God, that God brought that situation, brought that um, um, instruction, brought that purpose into my life because through and by that I had to grow up I had to mature I began to understand certain things that needed to be understood in order to enter into this rest that I can trust God uh, I can believe him uh, that he's well able to do it uh, what he promised that he would do and he can work in me both to will and to do of something that in the natural, I didn't think I had the wherewithal to do. Continue. As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again in this place, they shall not enter my rest, since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time, as it has been said. He designate an, another day. Today. That's the designated day. Today, after a long time. He said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Today. Continue. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works, as God did from his. So you cease from doing your own work, because our own work will not bring us rest. Only the work of God, and, and it should be so. He's the one that purchased us with his own blood. So there's a work. Uh, we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus. There's a work that God has designed for us to walk in. And that work will lead us to rest in different areas of our lives. That work will lead us to completion. 
that work will lead us to joy, the peace. In Romans 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this work that God, not only is it um, the purpose of God, it will bring you joy. It's bought me joy. It's bought me faith. It bought me grace. It bought me so many attributes of the spirit when I accepted the work that was going to bring me at completion rest. I will lay me down to sleep in peace for only the Lord causes me to dwell in safety. That the end of the work that he's given you to do, there is a sense of fulfillment. There is a sense of fullness. There is a completion and there is a joy. Uh, there is a purpose and there is meaning to life uh, for the person that would obey God. Um, um, and I'm not saying every day would be Sunday by and by. I'm simply saying when you look back and you think things over and you come to certain uh, forks in the road in your life, you say, wow, God, uh, look what you have wrought through the weakness and frailty of the person that he's instruct. That's why it's such a marvelous thing when God puts us on display in eternity that the angels can't believe it, that from us being dirt, that God could fashion such a glorious creation. In Romans chapter 4, verse 20 through 21. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. He was fully convinced. So as we walk apprehending this promise of rest, we become more and more convinced. That's true. We have setbacks. That's part of living and part of life. But when we uh, fall down, we get up and we continue. And the more we journey on, we become fully convinced that God is able to do it. When my last child walked across our little stage, um, at that point I was 59 years old and I could not believe what God had wrought through and by me. I, I, I'm to this day, I can't believe that he did it, but he did. And as a result, I have rest. You know, I have a couple other scriptures, but I want to say this before I close out that I went to a funeral uh, uh, today and it was someone in our church, um, uh, mother, and she was, was 95 years old. She turned 95 in December and she went on to be with the Lord shortly, a couple of weeks after that. But in her generation, and I dare say she might not have had as much God knowledge, head, head God knowledge, let's put it that way, that I have. I could be wrong. She may didn't have as much, but she believed God and she loved and served God and her husband and her family and her church. And the person that, the pastor that eulogized her was saying how she had done a job and it was well done and, and truly it was well done. Um, her testimony preceded her. She was um, uh, a lover of God, a lover of her family. And, you know, I'm, I'm saying all that to say she didn't run to be Miss America. Um, she didn't go to the moon. She probably never ran for a public office. Um, she might never even worked outside of the home. I don't think she did. Uh, she might never had a job, period. She, never, she probably never drove a car. I don't know. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. 
the point of it is, is that, but she was, um, she, she, she was, she has entered her rest after 95 years of serving, of loving God, of doing her little bit. And you might say, well, you know, she didn't do anything spectacular, but she did what uh, I think was the will of God. But in her generation, you had many women like that, that did simple things, but they produced spectacular results. Um, but it was her time to rest. That's my point. Uh, after being on this on this earth for 95 years, it was time to rest. And the person that utilized her, her name, the uh, that and the name of this um, mother, this woman, this awesome woman of God, was Mary Jane Hall. And even her name was, you know, a fairly simplistic, basic name, Mary Jane. You know, we have so many glamorous names today, but her name was a simple name. And maybe all she had was a simple task. And that was to love God, love her husband and her children, be a blessing in the community, be a community and be a blessing to the church. So now she can relax. I mean, she can be refreshed in the fact that she did what God would have her to do. And maybe it might seem a little bit simplistic, but to me it was, I was blessed and encouraged to keep running in my generation. And uh, even though I'm old and gray-headed now, to not allow the sun to go down without proclaiming the power of God and how important it is to apprehend a promise, a living promise, that when I transition over and come to the eternal rest that God has for me and others who await his coming, that God's purpose will be realized. And like her, that God a well done, that you and I, when we stand before God, having apprehended the promise that leads to rest, after apprehending the purpose of God for our lives, why we why we're here anyway, be it a big thing or a little thing, because the same response will be given, whether you went to the moon, which that's another story, or stayed here on earth. Well done good and faithful servant. So Father, I thank you. I bless you. I honor you. I thank you, O oh God, for your word as it goes forth. May it encourage your people, O oh God, to apprehend the promise, O oh God, of rest in you by doing your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. You can